Good morning, Timberlake. My name is Mariah and I serve on the team here. We're so excited as today marks our first day back in the building. Even though you weren't able to join us in person, we're so excited that you tune in online. If you haven't already downloaded our app, check it out. It'll help you fully engage in our online service. Select Cast Rock as your campus and click the connect menu option at the bottom of the app. This will give you message notes, giving options, a Bible, and you'll also find a connection card. We'd love to have you fill out as much information as possible to hopefully get to know you better. If you didn't already know, next week is Father's Day, and here at Timberlake, we love to throw a party. Next Sunday, bring your dad for a special service. All of our Timberlake men will be going home with a special gift, and we've got a great service planned. Thanks again for joining us, and welcome to Timberlake Church.
sent the darkness running out of an empty grave. Now seated alone in glory, enthroned on the highest praise. You sent the darkness running out of an empty grave. Now seated alone in glory, enthroned on the highest praise. You sent the darkness running. Praise 
Well, hey, church. Good morning again. Welcome to Timberlake Online. I'm so glad that you're tuning in today. Uh, listen, today is the first day of a brand new season that we have never been in before. Uh, we have opened the doors for in-person services today. Listen, I understand that you're not uh, in the building today, um, and that's okay. We want you to feel comfortable coming back to the building when you're ready to come back to the building. And what's so cool is that uh, next week we're going to be launching live online services. So you'll be able to actually watch the service as it happens uh, until you're ready to come back to the building. Listen, we're excited to see you, but we want you to feel comfortable. We want you to feel safe. Um, on our end, we're doing all the things that we should and need to. We've got all of our crazy restrictions in place. We're, we're cleaning and sanitizing all week long and, and even during the services. Uh, we want you to feel safe in this environment. But hey, I wanted to personally thank you for your investment in the church over the last three months. We've had this weird season, and we're not quite out of it yet, but, but what I've loved so much is watching the church step up and be the church, even in our finances and our resources. So thank you for your generosity and your tithes and your obedience and, and really just being a part of this with us. Listen, as always, you can give through the Timberlake app. You can uh, jump online and continue your online giving. You can text Timberlake CR to 77977. And of course, you can continue to, to send um, checks through the mail if that's your preferred method. Thanks again for being a part of this. Uh, we really believe that because of what we've accomplished even the last few months, it's not only allowed the church to continue functioning, but it's allowed us to step outside of the four walls and really bless our community and do things that we would not have been able to do. And, and truthfully, that's because of you and, and your obedience and your faithfulness in your giving. So thank you for that. Well, hey, uh, if you don't know this, we are part of um, a larger group of churches. There are five campuses that we all serve, and, and today we're going to hear from our Redmond campus uh, lead pastor, Pastor Ben. He's got a great message I'm excited for you to hear. I'll be back up in just a minute to close this out. Well, hello and welcome again to the Timberlake Autonomous Zone. I mean church. Uh, as we continue in our series, uh, Left to Our Own Devices, I'm Ben, I'm the lead pastor, and we've been going on a journey of sorts as we've considered uh, what can happen when we're in isolation, as we've been under stay-at-home orders. Those are hopefully going to start to lift a little bit uh, soon. But really, as we consider not only that, the physical isolation, isolation, but as we're isolated in other ways as well. Last week I had talked about uh, left to our own devices. Uh, we can sort of ignore our friends who uh, really need us. And, and we talked about that in terms of uh, race, especially as it relates to the African-American uh, community. And if you missed that one, I encourage you uh, to listen to that. I think it's so important for us, and, and not a new topic for us at Timberlake Church uh, as well. Well, today I, I want to consider what really what happens when you sort of lose your way. Have you ever lost your way a little bit? I, the good news is I have a million illustrations of losing things or getting lost. I, uh, the whole staff has been on assignment to look for my keys or cell phone many times. Uh, I, I remember, I shared this before, I was uh, hill walking in Scotland. That's what they call it. Not really hiking. They're not that big. And I was on this all-day hike, got dropped off, was going to hike back to the base camp, and I got incredibly lost. I was using a map and the, the bridge was washed out where uh, it said there was supposed to be one on a map and I went through that and literally, I'm not kidding, uh, birds were circling my head and I knew that things may not turn out very well. Well, after a little bit of a treacherous journey and more blisters than I ever had before, I found my way back and there's that feeling when you sort of like, okay, I'm back home or I'm back where I'm supposed to be. And my prayer is that you'll not only get that feeling, you'll get that experience. As we consider uh, left to my own devices, sometimes I forget about God. And we're not the first generation of people to ever do that. 
In fact, we read in Psalm 22, 27, which is a prophetic psalm uh, that talks about the coming of Jesus, the, the suffering servant, and, and when he comes and he gives his life and, and, and what he does for us and rises again, what will happen? And it says, all the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord and all the families of the nations. And that's true. That happened. People of all different races and creeds and languages, they came to Jesus and it changed everything in the modern world from education to hospitals to orphanages uh, to how uh, women were treated. And, and what happens though? God does this great work. People sort of forgot. In fact, you read in the Bible again and again, it, th there's that call to remember. And if we were honest, and I think most of us are around here, we would say there's those times in our life uh, as well that we, uh, we can forget God. Well, how does that happen? Number one is just through life's craziness. Uh, life's been a little bit crazy, right? Economic collapse, uh, we've had uh, COVID-19, as we've dealt with race relations in America, as there's been riots, as there's been giant murder hornets. You've got to love the name of that one. And you might think, well, it's not only that out there, it's what's happening in my home, in my heart uh, as well. Maybe you feel a little bit distant from people who, who, who you love, and, and you're just not sure how, how to find a way back. You know things are crazy, by the way. Uh, we, ha we have a cat at one of our campuses, our Redmond campus. It's been hanging around. And uh, someone took this picture uh, of me. You know I'm not a cat person. When I start petting and caring for cats, you know that uh, Jesus is about ready to come back again. Well, uh, secondly, there's spiritual atrophy. It's where we don't use those muscles, and so we don't feel strong, because honestly, we're not strong anymore. Uh, it's like the gym. You remember that when you used to go to the gym, or you used to have a gym that you could make excuses not to go to? Uh, I used to love and go, go in, lift weights, all of that. Well, after, you know, a few months of a stay-at-home order, I mean, try to do all the stuff at home, probably not what it once was. And, and I know the, the path back when we're allowed, when gym's open, uh, is to uh, get maybe not even the same old routine, but we know what it means to be strong, and there's some things that we need to do. And we're going to look at those, some practical steps you and I can take. Third, there's sustained affluence. Now, you, that you say, hey, that's not my problem, because we always compare ourselves to something else, by the way. Uh, but, but God has provided for us and, and our needs, and maybe you're, you've recognized now your job has changed or there's been an income change, and it's got your attention. That's not always a bad thing, because we can remember the one who gave us those things in the first place. And it leads to sort of a blurry vision, a, a blurry vision of life, of God, uh, of our future. And, and we're not the first generation to go through this. Uh, in fact, when Jesus came, he, he didn't just speak to the super spiritual or those who were far, far from God. There's that group in the middle of people who they believed in God, but they weren't living that life with God that they wanted to. We see one of those encounters, and I want to sort of zero in on that today. We read, as Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Well, why was he there? He was a tax collector for the occupying Roman army. Not, not a good job for a, for a Jewish boy. Uh, he was a traitor to his own people. But Jesus doesn't look at him as a traitor. He doesn't look at him as someone who probably, as, as history would tell us, extorted people, as often would happen with the tax collectors. They had to give a certain amount to the government, but they could collect extra. He looked at someone who him as someone who is worthy, someone who had a future, someone who could be part of God's plan. Follow me, he told him. And Matthew got up and followed him. And so we see that he begins this journey. And then later on, he doesn't just think about himself, he invites his friends. We read, uh, while Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, that, by the way, is a sign of acceptance. When you would go over to dinner for someone's house, it's maybe a little bit of a big deal, but back then it was a huge deal. It's saying, you're a person of value. You're someone I want to be in relationship with. 
Uh, well, what did he do? He invited his friends. Many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with the tax collectors and the sinners? See, they, say they wondered, why wasn't Jesus just focusing on the super spiritual? And Jesus said this. He said, it's not the healthy who need a, a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. So when you find yourself left out or lost, and, and maybe, maybe you're saying, oh, it's not that kind of extreme thing, but just something going on on the inside, that know that God's plan always includes a plan for you to come back. Maybe this season it's been a little thing, or it's been big, or you've just tuned in. We've actually had thousands of people tuning in every week, and, and I've met some. Some have come to our drive-in services or outdoor services. You say, hey, I never was a Jesus person. I never was a God person before. But there's something now that I, I, I recognize not only my need for God, but that God makes sense. And, and that can be one of those moments, even though it was born out of adversity, it could be the best moment in your life as, as you're finding your way back to God. And, and what I want to do is I want to look, uh, really there's a book by Dave and John Ferguson called Finding Your Wa Way Back to God, Five Awakenings. And I want to look at Five Awakenings. I'm not going to follow exactly what the book says. It's a great one if you want to read it, and especially if you find yourself in that place where you're restarting or starting your spiritual journey. Uh, but I want to look at five awakenings that we can have uh, in our lives. See, we show up a certain way as a church. Uh, there, there's uh, Reinhold Niebuhr, a great theologian, and, and he de described this really in a, in, a, in a similar way, that we can be uh, a church where it's all about church cultural affirmation. Whatever the culture says is, you know, it must be God-ordained. Well, in the last couple of weeks, what have we done? We've challenged that. And I think in a healthy and a, in a good way that I think is from the Lord. Then there's also uh, cultural rejection. You know, sort of go in your holy huddle, forget people. That's not what Jesus did. He ate with tax collectors and sinners. He hung out with them. In fact, you get the idea that he had a pretty good time. And I think there's a third way, which is cultural engagement. And that's what we've chosen to do at Timberlake Church, where we believe that God takes those of us who are doing pretty well and those of us who are hurting and broken. And, and, and he creates something that would be impossible without him. Not only in our church and the communities we serve and our mission partners, but in our lives. And so if you find yourself uh, at one of our campuses or watching online today and you think it's a great accident, I don't believe that at all. I believe that maybe God wants you to awaken to him in a new and fresh way or maybe for the first time uh, in your life. One of the things we know is that when it comes to, to church, things are changing. Uh, the Economist uh, wrote this about uh, church in America, and it said it was uh, accelerating the decline uh, of church, and I'm going to talk about that in a moment, sort of a certain type of church. In the article, it said, David Kinneman, the president of the Barna Group, reckons that as many as one in five churches and one in three mainline churches could close for good within 18 months. Because there's sort of this old way of thinking and old way of doing things. Does that mean God's not going to be at work? No, God is at work. As, as I've said, we have seen more people engaged in the last 90 days than ever before. I mean, uh, thousands online and as we've offered live options. But it's not just about big, big crowds coming. It's about you coming to God. It's about me coming to God and being awakened to Him. The first awakening is simple. It's just a gap. It's the gap from what is to what could be or what God has intended for us. 
So we, when we recognize that sort of the gaps in our life, we don't need to have despair. We just need to, to recognize that and understand that, that God has done something. We read this in the Bible. It says, in him, that's Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. That God's grace is for you and for me. The Apostle Paul, who was anti-Jesus, became a follower of Jesus. He, he had some struggles in his life. And we read this. It says, but he, God, said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. And, and here's what I want you to know when you say, well, I'm coming with my doubts. I'm coming with my pain. I'm coming with my struggles. Is that his grace is sufficient for you. And we need to know this especially as number two, we deal with our regrets. We all have regrets in our life, things we wish we would have done, things we wish uh, we wouldn't have done in our lives. The people who hung around Jesus, as I said, uh, were people who, who had a lot of regrets. Uh, that, that they were sort of in the, back, in the back of the room, if you could imagine a physical building. And Jesus says, no, I, I invite you to come to me. The Apostle Paul, uh, he had his own struggles, and we read about them in the book of Romans. He says, I do not understand what I do. It, many of you will relate to this. I know I do. For what I want to do, I do not do, and but what I hate, I do. So is that it? Is I'm going to keep on doing the things I hate? There's no hope for me? No, it says in Romans 8.1, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That you can take your regrets and you can bring them to Jesus. It's sort of like, a, you remember as a kid, uh, the Etch-A-Sketch. Uh, I love these. Uh, you'd have these and you would use these buttons to draw a picture. You usually wouldn't hang it in an art museum. There's no uh, Etch-A-Sketch museums. If it wasn't very good, you'd just shake it and get to start over again. And, and, and we think about that in our life, that sometimes we feel that our, our failures are final or fatal. That's not what the Bible says, that, w that we can come to him. There's a story of a lady who was caught in the midst of the act of adultery, and it was a bad day for her. And there were a bunch of religious leaders about ready to, to stone her to death. And uh, Jesus said, hey, whoever has not sinned, you go ahead and go first, and they all walk away. And then Jesus says, hey, what happened to all these people that were going to condemn you? She goes, they're not here. And he says this, neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. When a sin is forgiven, it's forgotten in God's eyes. And that really leads to the third awakening, hope. That we don't need to stay where we're at. I, I, I know so many people who've sort of gotten stuck in this last season. The idea is, oh, you know, sort of a, like Eeyore. <laughs> on, uh, and if you're an Eeyore kind of person, I just pray that God makes you more like Tigger. Because <laughs> Tiggers are wonderful things. And you know all the things that go with that. Uh, that we, we just, we have such a myopic view of life. We don't see what God can do. There, there's a, a, a chasm in history of sorts uh, that's talked about in John 1.17. It says, for the law was given through Moses. That tells us where maybe we haven't done well or our way to live, and sometimes we live up to it, sometimes we don't. But grace and truth through Jesus Christ. That grace was brought through Jesus. In fact, there was a uh, religious leader, and he was, he was a little bit fearful of what people would think. I'm going to talk about that in a couple of weeks. That, that, that other people's opinions, we can let them define us, we can let them defeat us. So he comes to Jesus, and uh, he, he says, hey, how do, I, how, how do I have the kind of spiritual life that you talk about? And Jesus said, it's all about what God has done on your behalf. And, and he says what is probably the most famous Bible verse in the world that people know, that uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that who ever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. I know some of you, that's not a message that you've heard. That's not a message you've received. You heard something else. You heard there's no help and there was no hope. Now, the question is, are you going to take it? 
Because your life changed is when we, number four, we awaken to spiritual action. We, we understand there's something that we can do. Think about Jesus' followers. In fact, they're not spoken of very highly. In the book of Acts, we read uh, that when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled and ordinary men, basically it's saying they're not that smart, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. And so uh, they had taken some action in their life. What are some actions that you can take? We've talked about this during this stay-at-home season, uh, as there's been a thousand or more of you who've joined in online groups. We're going to be able to start those live uh, probably in the next month or two, and we're going to continue online presence as well. In fact, I, I just want to say a little bit about where we're going as a church and how, what it means for you taking steps of spiritual action. For those of you who join us online, we've had an online campus uh, for, I think, about 11 years now. We've been doing this for a, a long time. We're going to continue that. We've learned a lot. We're, I think we've gotten a little bit better. The team has done an amazing job on that. Our uh, drive-in services at some of our campuses, we're going to continue that. We know that there are people who are at higher risk, and we want to offer community uh, in that kind of environment as well. But uh, in the middle of July, July 19th, uh, it, it looks like we're going to be able to start live services on all our campuses. And so that's what we're really... Now, we know things can change, uh, but uh, maybe a little earlier or a little later. But we are, we are saying July 19th, we are starting live services on all our campuses that are indoors. We already offer those outdoors in a, a number of our locations. And so here's what I want you to consider. Maybe for you, it's not about what you get, but helping other people out. Will you use that online connection card and say, hey, I am willing to serve on a team. Now, this is important because we're going to probably have to offer even more options of church, meaning more people serving than we've ever needed uh, before. So we're going to uh, do that. And then uh, the following week, uh, we're going to, on the 26th of July, is we're going to have Baptism Sunday. That's a big deal around here at Timberlake. And we're going to do it different. Everyone's going to have their own uh, sanitary baptismal. So it's, you don't need to worry about it. We've worried about it long before you worried about it. But if you've not taken that step where you identify with the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ by being baptized, I encourage you to do that. We give you a, a free t-shirt. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we celebrate. It's a big, uh, a big party. And encourage you to come invite your friends. It's sort of weird. People who never go to church, they'll say, yeah, I'll go baptism. For some reason, people will show up to that. And if you say, hey, you know, I need to clean up my life before I can be baptized, well, one, you probably need to clean up your life. That's probably true. But uh, the only thing you need is your sin and Jesus. So can you bring your sin? And <laughs> Jesus will come, and he will help us step into that new life. It's also about obedience where we follow him. Uh, in that doesn't cost you anything. You don't need to say anything. And then the first week in August, we're going to have our Discover Timberlake, where we activate and you learn about what we're about, what we believe, and we get you connected with other people. Because as we say, we don't want anyone to stand alone in life. So this really leads to us, number five, stepping into our purpose. You know that God has created you not only to love you, that is so true, that he has created you to do a work in you. Galatians 2.20, the Apostle Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. Remember all that stuff he couldn't get rid of? I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. This is a time of year, and we are celebrating grads this weekend. Uh, and just want to say, hey, way to go. Uh, we've been doing some great things uh, for them. And, and we're just so proud of the many people who volunteer and our staff and our student ministry that make a difference in the lives of students, for those of you graduating from high school, those of you graduating from college. But whether it's uh, like marriage or graduation, there's sort of a, a death a burial, and a resurrection. You're closing one chapter, and you're starting a new chapter in your life. 
And, and I think for some of us, what we need to do is embrace that and say, hey, you know, there are some things that need to not go forward in my life anymore. Not uh, because I, I'm trying to shut other people out, not because I'm trying to draw a hard line in the sand, but because I believe that God has something for me as I step towards him. And, and, and if you have that want to in your heart, that want to, to to bridge that gap between you and God, you don't ever need to worry about his reaction. Because the Bible says this and, and over and over again in many ways, that when we run towards him, that he runs towards us. Well, hey, let me pray with you today. God, thank you so much for uh, your work in our life, God. Thanks for what you're currently doing. Thank you for this new season that we're stepping into. God, I pray that you would bless us, that you would encourage us as we, as we begin to go about our week. Uh, bring us back here online or in person uh, next Sunday. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, have a great week, church, and we will see you soon. Thank you.